Hey everyone, welcome to another video. So today's topic is going to be how to improve at team fighting and skirmishing. And so the way I'm going to do this video is I'm going to go through three differing team fights and I'm actually going to, get it, going to give you the criteria or the steps that you need to break down and be able to internalize for yourself as both a gold in one for the first team fight. In the second team fight, I'm going to review it as if I'm a platinum slash like low diamond. And then the third game, I'm, I'm going to review it as if I'm like you know, a high, high diamond slash master grandmaster challenger. And what you'll see is that it progressively gets more in depth. And the way I want you to approach this is take notes in this video and kind of set these aside for yourself, depending on the ELO that you're in. And when you finish a game, go back to the team fight and use this criteria to improve your own games. And remember, this is a long-term process. It doesn't just happen overnight. You slowly, slowly add these things into your thoughts. So eventually each of them become a habit so you don't have to think about them in the future and while you're in the game. It actually becomes muscle memory. So for the first game here, I'm gonna review this as if I'm a gold player and how I would recommend approaching it. And so I'll give you a bit of context in this game. So we're quite far ahead. I'm playing Rise. Um, I'm 6 and 0. A few of the things that we have to note here. Um, we're just about to, we just finished getting the dragon and we're looking to chase them into the jungle here. So um, as a goal player, the first thing that you need to think about, and when you're in game, this is what you need to be thinking about, is you need to be able to identify your role. And so what do I mean by that? So a role basically is, you know, the way, your identity within this specific game. So it depends on the champions in the game. It depends on the strength of your specific champion, whether you're fed. It depends on your item, like your power spikes, your levels. It depends on all these things. And this will come with time, obviously, when you play the champion more. But for this specific game, um, because I'm so strong and I have already had my fully upgraded Seraphs, I have Mercury Treads, um, my role is I can actually both play the fights two ways. I can play peel front to back and just play the team fight that way, or I can actually ult in and look to kill their back line because it's a Twitch who's super immobile. And, um, since I'm so tanky, it's very difficult for, to, for, for them to kill me. So I can actually play this fight multiple, multiple ways. So my role is actually very, very flexible and I can, um, I can actually, since my role is so flexible, I can play the fight so many different ways. And this also, for, for, for you guys trying to figure out your role in different games, think about it in terms of the strength and weaknesses of your champion. If you're playing Lux, for example, if I'm reviewing this in the position of Lux, he's not going to really going to be diving any, anyone, really. He's going to be looking to play front to back, peel for his teammates, look to bind someone and burst someone. That's his role in that team fight. Um, he's not going to be looking to dive. He's not going to be looking to come from the side. He's not going to be doing, looking to do anything fancy. He's just a solid front to back, hit skill shots, um, peel through his twitch and with his shields and stuff like that and burst, look to burst. So once you've identified your role in the team fight, then you want to be starting to think about where's my teammate locations. So in every team fight as a goal player, you really read, need to be aware of where everyone in is on your team in terms of locations. So in this specific team fight, four of us are down here and Kale's already up looking to start the fight. And the reason this is important is that you may see someone dead and in base, someone recalling, someone um, not really ready to, to fight yet. Um, and if you use this information, a lot, of, a lot of the time you're going to save yourself going in and dying if no one's there to follow up, because I say that all the time in gold games. Thirdly, um, what I recommend next is identifying enemy key threats. And what I mean by this is major abilities, things that genuinely threaten me and my champion that can kill me. So in this game, um, the main thing that I need to be careful of is... Uh, Lux bind. If I get Lux binded in this fight, they could potentially look to burst me. And then even maybe even Kha'Zix, if I'm like fully committed in, he can flank me. Basically any ability for me getting chain CC'd. Because I'm Rise with Mercury and Seraphs, I'm not threatened that much by, by many abilities. But you know, you can easily see this from the, uh, from the eyes of Lux. And uh, you know, if I'm Lux, the key threats would be Javan EQ ultimate because he can't get out of it or Ash ultimate or Pike Q or, you know, any of these things. These are key threats on my champion. And the reason this is important because it directly influences what you should be thinking about heading into the fight. Preempting, this is the ability I should dodge. And this is what will help you navigate team fights. And then fourth, who do I threaten? Given my champion, given my role, given my 
like everything I'm saying, who do I generally threaten in this game? Well, given that um, no one really has much MR and no one can really avoid my damage, I actually threaten everyone on their enemy team. But sometimes this is useful when you're versing, say, a tank. You Maybe you're versing someone who's stacking MR. Maybe you're versing someone who just outranges you. Maybe there's champions in the game that j you just can't threaten. So the reason this is important is, is this will help you have a rough guideline in terms of who should you focus in the team fight. Who do you threaten the most? And this depends on your yeah, tankiness, mobility. Um, it's a really good way and for me I'm thinking this in this heading into this fight well I actually threaten everyone and to be honest with you I threaten probably twitch the most if I can get on top of him because I can nearly 100 to zero him um I pretty much threaten everyone this game like even Jax he, he's stunned he's blocking um thing doesn't really do anything Kha'Zix can kind of jump away I threaten everyone this game so I'm actually quite lucky but if you're Lux for example you don't you probably don't threaten someone like Jarvan that much he's quite tanky um, and even Kale to a certain extent because he has ultimate, but you would threaten um, Ash hell of a lot because he has no defensive summoners and or mobility and you can nearly 100 to zero him because he's quite behind. So let's play this out and then um, I'll review it as if I'm a gold player. So you see me here, I'm walking up. And then I decide to ult in here in the back line and then I get a chunk off and then I notice Jack's going out into my back line because... Um, I can't follow up anymore. I, I'm trying to dodge key abilities like Lux Binds and things like that. Twitch goes in. I'm trying to play with my team. And then I see Lux has no Q, so I can walk up, get a bit of damage. And then um, Kazu kind of backs off and it's really hard for me to do anything. So let's play that one more time. So, a few things to think about here. In my role, because I'm flexible, I end up choosing to go to dive into the back line here because it felt like it was difficult for me to get on Jax and Kha'Zix here because I'm not in range, so I ult in. In terms of key threats, um, I'm looking to dodge Lux Q. And then I see um, my teammate location. I'm thinking teammate location. They're not near me. They're not ready to back me up here. So I need to come back and help my team. So I walk back, help my team. Because again, I'm flexible. I can both threaten the back line and help my team here. And I, because I threatened Jax, I want to try to, I can kill him. And then also here I saw Lux use Bind. Um, and now I'm trying to kill Twitch because I threatened him the, the most. And he's closest to me. And then I, um, the fight's kind of over. So this fight, it was played okay. Um, you can maybe, maybe the, the ultimate in was a bit questionable. But overall, um, I think I assessed my teammates' location quite well because I backed up instantly as soon as, um, Jax was jumping in onto my back line. I assessed the key threats in the in the game, which was I didn't really get hit by Luxbine until the end here. Um, and I was aware of who I threatened. It was very difficult for me to go on the Kha'Zix because he can just jump away. So I was constantly trying to focus the person near me, um, and especially Twitch when he flashed in, because I threatened him the most when he flashed in. So this was a really basic team fight, and nothing too special happened. But you can see how this rough guideline is a really good way to, to go back in time in your VODs think and, and, and actually try and think back. In this moment, was I aware of my role? Was I aware of my teammates' locations? Was I aware of the enemy key threats? Who Was I aware of who I, who I actually threatened? If you can step back, this is a really, really great way for a goal player to just in, improve on the fundamentals of team fighting. So what we'll do, we'll jump into another team fight um, and I'm going to review that through the lens of a platinum and, and low diamond and see what other criteria we need to add in. So in this example here, um, this is going to be, I'm gonna review this as if I'm a platinum or low diamond player. And we'll go through the same criteria, the initial same criteria as we did for the goal, but we're gonna add a few extra ones in here. So to give a bit of context for this game here, it's, a re it's quite a close game. Um, my vein just died before a team fight starting around this mountain dragon. Um, I'm playing Twisted Fate, and f unfortunately, Vayne was the Fed member of this team, and we're versing a, a very Fed uh, Vladimir right now, who um, is, is is very, very scary, and I was versing a Lux mid, and a Jana Ezreal bot lane. So, straight away now, first of all, what do we have to think about is my role. So my role, given this specific situation, um, I can't really dive into the back line. And the reason is diving on TF at this point, I don't have my Zonyas. It's really difficult for anyone to follow up because they have Ezreal, Lux, Jana, so much peel and so much disengage. So how do I want to play the fight? 
I want to play with my team. I want to play, want them to play around my goal card. I want to play kind of front to back in a way. And because that's the strength of my champion, playing around my cooldowns, playing around my gold card. And I, since I can't really dive, that's the, the other only other option, right? Um, and so next, and, and I can go more into that, but again, you kind of you kind of know um, the the basics around identifying your role. Next, teammate location. So given my vein is dead in base, that is huge, huge crucial information, and I'm actively thinking about this. So already for me, because my my AD car is dead. I'm already thinking, well, this fight's going to be really hard. I want to try and stall this out. So notice how teammate location actually actively changes the way you should approach the fight. Because I know now we can't go all in because Vayne's not going to be here. Next, I'm identifying key enemy threats. So Vladimir ultimate's a huge threat on me. He can nearly 100 to 0 me if he gets a full combo. Lux bind again in this game. And even Kha'Zix to a certain extent. So again, I want to not let Vlad get on top of me. I want to dodge Lux binds, and I don't want to let Kha'Zix get on top of me either. So you'll be looking to see me deal with those threats by either um, keeping them at a distance, tethering them, or or just stunning them as soon as they're near me. Next, who do I threaten? So um, given this game, and this will tie into the extra piece of criteria is who do I threaten? Well. Um, I threaten pretty much most people in this game if I can get in range, but this ties into the next part of criteria, which is assessing itemization and summoners. So this is the next level up. So if you're a, you know, a high plat, low diamond player, assessing summoners and itemization is really, really important because it drastically changes the way the fight is actually played out. So for example, I'm playing Twisted Fate. I should check, does anyone have cleanse? Does anyone have... A QSS? Does anyone have uh, more of Malmordius or a Hex Drinker? Does anyone have um, Barrier or things like this? As as Zonias or Stopwatches? I'm assessing these things before the fight because this is drastically going to change who I target and the way I want to navigate this team fight. So in this game, no one end up having cleanse, no one has any QSSs, no one has any Hex Drinkers, so everyone's quite squishy. So this will go back to who do I threaten? I actually threaten everyone to be honest with you. Maybe less so Vlad because he has pool, but again, even me burning pool is really, really good. So that's the next level up there. The next thing is maxim. this is a, a quite an advanced thing and you'll see, I see maybe in low diamond, is maximize the effectiveness of your champion with pre-fight positioning. So in this fight here, I'm thinking, well, given that we're versing a Vladimir and a Lux and Ezra and Jana and they all want to throw abilities at us and we, they want to kind of keep us in, in, in one direction, it's really annoying for them, and it's way, way better for me if I come in from a different angle. So you'll see me here. Um, because I want to buy time, I'm not um, just coming in and grouping with the team. Because I know if I group on this side, Vladimir can easily just sit up here in a bush and look to five-man ulti. But if I'm annoying them and coming in from the side, and they see me here, and I can just keep here throwing gold cards, look how much harder it is for them to A... Throw, throw, throw their AoE disengage abilities in one direction. They can't because I can come in from the other direction. And then also, um, if Kha'Zix jumps on one side, their backline's getting opened up here, and Vladimir can't all in on one side because I'm, I'm constantly here annoying him, keeping out of tether and stunning him. So this is me maximizing my champion's strength and maximizing the situation for me through pre-fight positioning. And this will change along every different like a lot of different champions maybe you're playing oriana and you just want to be with the team and in position with the ball maybe you want to be you're playing akali you want to come in from the flank maybe you're playing zed and you want to come in from the side whatever it is think about your champion and think about how you can maximize the effectiveness of of your champion given the situation with pre-fight positioning and the last topic I, um, you need to think about and, and to level up, and again, remember, we're only focusing on one of these at a time. If you're a player, focus on one of these at a time, is purposeful target selection. So in this fight, I'm focusing people um, based off who can follow up, who is the best target, who's the squishiest target, based on all these, all these pieces of information, the itemization, all these things. Um, I'm not just hitting the person closest to me. Although a lot of the time that is the best way to go. But a lot of the time, if you're in the middle of a fight and say you have Zonyas, maybe it's better for you to t fo focus the person that doesn't have summoners, doesn't have cleanse, and is the squishiest member. This is what we call purposeful target selection. You're not just panicking and hitting the first person next to you. So let's play out this fight and I'll kind of review it as if I'm a, a high plat, low diamond player. 
So here I'm kind of annoying them, keeping him out of tether, made him use his... See how I'm constantly walking back and forth here? I'm constantly thinking about the threats. I'm not letting Vlad get on top of me. Bang! This is the first mistake. I get hit by a lock spine. So already I'm thinking in review, how can I let myself get hit by this? This is a key threatening ability, and I got hit by it. Luckily, I had Mercury Treads, so I can get out. So right now, I'm just following up with the team. Pike dives in way too deep, and this is a perfect example of Pike here not assessing his teammate's location. So if I'm Pike reviewing this game in this team fight, I'm thinking, wow, I really kind of overstepped there because my vein was just coming out of base and is only now getting to the fight. So even now, um, again, assessing key threats. Um, it's very difficult for me to get in because I know they're all over the wall. Um, Vladimir now she's ultimate, so no one really threatens me. I kind of just want to help my vein. Ezreal goes in, closest target, plus he's a squishiest, and we're able to kill him, and then I kind of get out on the backside. This fight could have... I'll go through it one more time. This fight could have been played a lot better by my team, um, but here I... I uh, if I go back one more time, sorry. Um, so I think, first of all, I identified my role pretty well. I identified my teammate's location pretty well. I identified key threats here. I was, I'm keeping him out of tether. I'm not letting Vlad get onto me. I'm not letting anyone hit any skill shots on me. I'm focusing Kha'Zix here because I know Tali can follow up, so I'm assessing um, purposeful target selection. And I've already I've already noted um, itemization. No one has cleansers or anything, so I'm all good to free hit anyone. And in terms of uh, here, this is where I failed to identify enemy key threats because I got hit by one. And then next, um, this is where we should again just play front to back, wait for, for Vlad uh, Vayne to come in. And it's really the kind of fight's really over after Pike dies here. So I'm actually pretty happy with the play with the way I played this this team fight. Maybe here I could have played a little bit more aggressive to kind of save Vayne. I shouldn't have backed off. Maybe walked up here, threatened uh, Vlad a little bit. But I was really scared of Lux over this wall throwing a bind and hitting me. So you know I had a I, I don't know if I had a bounty, but um, I probably should have defended Vayne here since he's quite fed. But overall. I played this fight pretty decently, and I'd be pretty happy if I'm a low, you know, low diamond player in the way I play this fight. I didn't just randomly group with my team and allow us to get AOE'd. I made this fight quite close and stalled the fight, given that Vayne wasn't even here. And I think I ticked most of the boxes. So, what I'll do is go through another example, one more team fight, and add a few more things to the criteria. And again, to reiterate, we're not adding all these at once into your skill. We're slowly adding one of these at a time in your review. Add one of these in, in, at a time. And make it a habit one by one, one by one. And eventually, these things will become muscle memory and you'll be doing these things without even you knowing. Um, so let's take a look at another example. So in this next example here, I'm going to be reviewing it through the lens of someone who's high diamond master, grandmaster, challenger. And so I'll go over the basics that we've gone over in gold and platinum elo. And then I'll tie in three or four more points that um, you know you need to be reviewing if you want to be an you know an aspiring pro pro player or kind of really get to that challenger level in terms of team fighting skirmishing. So here to give a bit of context of the game, um, you know I'm Akali in this situation. It's getting into mid to late game, 25 minutes in. Uh, we're actually behind at the moment, and everyone's kind of looking to play around Baron and, and play around this mid wave because everyone wants to get push on mid wave here. But because I'm Akali. Um, you know, and obviously if we go through my role, you know, I want to be threatening on the back line. I don't want to really want to be playing front to back team fights. I want to be getting in, coming from the side and um, threatening that back line. You know, two, my teammate locations, I'm already assessing, you know, everyone is round mid looking to be on this mid wave. Um, key enemy threats on me. Um, Casio's miasma is really big for me. I need to be avoiding that at all costs. Um, Lee Sin, you know, because he can kind of kick me out of the fight. So I kind of want to avoid Lee Sin's kick in a way. And... And even, um, you know, Cassio Ultimate, because if I get stunned, it can be quite troublesome for me as well. So they're the main threats. And actually, Darius as well, because he's really fed, and if he gets onto me, it'll be quite annoying. Even though he has no M MR, he'll buy a lot of time for his team. So I really want to avoid those key figures. And who do I threaten? Well, no one, uh, no one is really itemized for me. I'll tie in both assessing itemization and summoners. No one really has any MR this game, um, they've got a lot of armor since I'm the only AP source. So I threaten actually everyone on this team mainly, but um, specifically Kaiser, Lulu, Cassio, they're the ones I want to be looking to threaten, but less so Cassio because he has Seraphs, mainly this Kaiser and trying to get him out of the fight. And so obviously first thing you want to see, right, is maximizing pre-fight um, positioning. 
right? So here, obviously, I'm a Kali and I want to come in from the side. So I'm, I teleport on to, I don't teleport from the front because I don't want to be coming in from the front because I want to maximize the strength of my champion in my team fight. I want to be able to get into the back line. So I'm coming in from the side. So I'm ticked that box straight away. Next, and I've already spoken about assessing itemization and summoners. And target selection, right? So usually what you want to be doing is selecting targets that people can follow up and burst. But because I'm playing Akali and I want to solo dive the back line, target selection is not going to be as important. I kind of just want to make sure that I'm on Kaiser Lulu in the back line here. So um, let's play this out. And I'll tie in the next point for you as this plays out. So I go in here. And notice how I'm coming from the side, buying in a lot of time. And what this is doing is that now my team can chase down Darius. And I have Zonya still, so I go in here buying so much time. I force them to use Lulu Ultimate. Everyone's focusing on me. And then this allows us to go Darius here. So just from a few team fight fundamentals here, positioning, target selection, buying time, um, I was able to get my team a really good um, fight off. But the main point I want to push it here, and this is what I want every, you know, every aspiring pro player or high elo player to look at is what are the creative uses with your kit that you can do to turn the tides of a team fight? And for me, in this case, for example, I know that I have Shroud, so I can buy a lot of time. I can force, push Kaiser and Lulu up here into an awkward position so they can't just run straight down. And then because I have Zonyas and because my champion's so good at going in and out like this, I can go in, use my Zonyas. This buys so much time, creates so much space for my team so they can kill someone. My intention here, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to burst uh, Kaiser and Luna in the back line, but I did this as a creative use of my kit and my champion and my items to buy time for my team. So this is stuff that is very specific to champions. If you have champion mastery, you can look to do some crazy different things knowing that it's going to win you a team fight. And this is something that will change team fight to team fight. And it's very difficult to have one core like creative way to do a team fight every single time. No, it kind of depends on the situation. So that's kind of what I wanted to highlight within this team fight. So let's actually take a look at another team fight here to hone in the last few points. So again, the same game, just a bit further on later in the game. Uh, and we end up trying to look for a pick on Darius here on the, on the bot lane. So um, the point I want to drill in here, which the next point in reviews that you always need to look at as a high elo player is Real-time, two things, real-time assessment of the fight, which what I mean by that is as the fight is progressing and going on, just because your initial plan was to do something, whether it's to dive the back line, if that's not working or someone's overextended too far into your team, you can always peel back and kill that person. You need to be able to real-time assess what's happening in the fight to adjust and adapt. So this is very high level stuff, but something that I failed to do in this team fight, and you'll, if we play this out, you'll kind of see what I mean. So we go on Darius, we kill here, and what do we see in the back lane? Lee Sin's on my Zaya. I did not think about this whatsoever. So I'm, I'm, I continue to go forward and try and buy time for my team, but little do I know Lee Sin's on the back time buying time for his team. And because he has GA and because I've overextended, um, I, I should have just ulted back and killed the Lee Sin with my team, but I didn't in real time assess the situation. And this is also ties into team fight, team, uh, team, sorry, uh, teammate location. So that's another thing that I failed to recognize here. So let's go back again. Another concept that you need to really understand as a high, high elo player is terrain, understanding terrain and terrain assessment, not just for your for your um, champion, but for everyone's champion. So for example, Cassiopeia is the perfect example of a champion that thrives in these chokes here. Because he can just put his Miasma in one of these corridors, or his ultimate covers the whole entrance, and his Q nearly covers most of the entrance as well. So as, as me in this game, I should be thinking, well, how difficult is it for us to walk in to this choke point here? Look how good this is in terms of terrain for Cassio. They all have to funnel in if they want to get him. This is not a great fight for me, uh, for our team. And if I go in here, um, I'm not assessing terrain whatsoever. I'm not assessing, wait, if my team walks in here, they can't go on Cassio and they can't follow in, otherwise they're going to get flanked. So this is really, really bad. Whereas Cassio, if he was in the open down here, it's a lot easier because, um, you know, then he's super vulnerable. There's so much space to kind of maneuver around and it's harder for him to cover all the area with his miasma and his, and his abilities. So terrain assessment is really crucial on champions such as like Orianna, obviously like Rumble, Jarvan, all these champions where choke points are super important. Um, but also open area fights. Champions like um, 
you know, I mean, you can also choke points for Lux and stuff, but Ezreal and things like that, they want open area a lot of the time because they want to spend time hitting their skill shots. They want the open, like, the open area. But, you know, sometimes conversely, um, you know, some of them might also want choke points. It just really depends on champion mastery and how you feel like the game's going, but it's really important to think about terrain. And then the last thing, um, you know, and this fight spe specifically, if I was to go over this VOD, obviously um, the main error in, in me, t like, reviewing this one is that um obviously like i said before team fight location i didn't assess terrain i didn't assess um i didn't assess here i thought he would die so i didn't actually have i uh, didn't actually think about my threat on the person as much as possible and then also here i went in way too deep and um because i didn't in real time assess the situation i should have been should have been peeling back right now and we probably could have killed lee sin it would have been a, a quite an easy fight so um, and then lastly, to finish it all off, uh, micro. So when I, when I talk about micro, all it means is you need to look in detail about, okay, could I have been, um, could I have hit more skill shots? Could I have dodged more skill shots? Especially if you're playing skill shot oriented champions, could I have positioned my, say if you're playing Ezra, for example, I remember when, um, you know, when I coached in pro leagues, 80 carries who played Ezreal, they would look back on their team fights and be like, oh, here I should have queued this way. Why am I queuing here? Why am I queuing here? Why am I not queuing this way? What? And like you can pick up on sloppy uses of abilities. So just overall micro as a high yellow player is super, super important as well. And to reiterate one last time, these are things that will take a lot of time to implement. Um, and it's not, again, it's not a one day or one week or even a one month. This is a long-term project that you need to do if you want to really up your game. And... What I recommend is, let's figure it first, you need to play a few games and review and see what is a habit for you and what's not. Maybe it already is a habit for you that you know who you threaten, you know what your role is, you know your team fights location, you know how to assess summoners, time summoners and, and itemization, you know how to pre-fight position properly, you know purposeful target selection, but maybe you don't understand terrain too well, maybe you don't understand real-time assessment, maybe you don't understand creative uses of your kit. We, Honing in on one of them at a time, creating a habit, that is how you're going to improve. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I tried to make it quite in-depth for you guys. Um, make sure you take notes. Note these down somewhere. Take your time. Um, go at your own pace. And hopefully it will all, um, this really ups your game in terms of team fighting skirmishing. Cheers. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.